Good morning, everybody, and happy cookout day. I hope that you are up getting ready to go with your families. I know that Greer Heights is going to be having a parade this morning at 10. So if you are up, and getting your family and friends together for the day, then I want to wish you a very, very, very happy day with your family and friends. Um, we are doing the Speak Up and Inspire series this morning, um, finishing out the um, August showcase for inspirational teachers. But today we're going to be doing something just a little bit different. Um, we are going to be talking to a mom who has taught and supported her daughter, Miss Chloe Olivia, to be an advocate for herself and now being an advocate for others. Um, this is a awesome story. Um, there's a, a movement that is going on right now among our youths to um, advocate for themselves against bullying. And Miss Chloe Olivia, excuse me, Miss Chloe Olivia is definitely a role model for other kids, I'm sure, in her school, um, but also for the youths in our communities. And she is a very good example of coming from up under everything that she has been through to advocate for herself and to advocate for others against bullying. So if your children are up, then I would highly, highly, highly recommend you ask them to watch this interview with you. However, we always do a replay. I always send out replays and now we are doing um, watch parties during the week to give you the replay. So if your children are not up yet, because it is pretty early on a day that they don't have to go to school, then they can watch it later. But if they are, stop everything you're doing, get them together, and please join us for our Speak Up and Inspire series this morning. We usually do the Speak Up and Inspire series podcast at 8 p.m. on Monday evenings, but because this is a reschedule and it's a holiday, we are doing it this morning at 10 a.m. No matter where you are, you can watch Mr. Sean. So make sure that you watch and tune in with us. I also wanted to put in a plug for Mr. Rodney Dane. I am reading his book right now, Escape from Darkness. If you are from the DMV area, especially Northern Virginia, you want to read this book. It has a lot of experiences in here, a lot of things going on in here that I can relate to being from the DMV area. My sister is from Alexandria, Virginia, so I've been meaning to reach out to her to ask her if she knows some of these places that are mentioned in the book. But Escape from Darkness is about a young man who is gets into the streets, um, he's um, selling drugs, um, he's beating up people, he's taking charge of the streets where he grew up at, and he gets incarcerated. And this is his journey for getting out of incarceration. So I want to read it to you real quickly because I started reading it and it has some go-go in here and it has a whole lot of stuff in here that I can relate to. So that means that you can relate to this book as well because it's talking about real life locations, real life places, real life experiences. And when I tell you that there's a game in here, I can't even remember what it is. But I'm going to have to put it in the comments later that I've never even played before, but maybe you have. So the um, synopsis that's on the back is Rodney, a.k.a. Skeet, was a good kid who started out on the right path. But growing up in the DMV in the late 70s, 80s, the streets became his calling. The drug game back then, as it is now, was a cutthroat world. Yet with his friends Black and JoJo, he was determined to make it. First kicked out of the house, then kicked out of school, the streets became his identity. Subsequently, a dispute with a fellow dealer turned deadly and he was sentenced to life in prison. Now, at 18 years old, he must figure out how to survive the penitentiary and make it out alive. Journey with him as he walks you through a life in which he must try to escape from darkness. So, if you are a reader, or even if you're not a reader, then I really encourage you to get this book. Escape from Darkness by Rodney Dane. It's a very good read. Once you start reading it, you're going to want to continue to read it. Um, I'm enjoying it. And quite 
I guess personally, because I can relate to some of the places and the things that he's talking about, it makes it even more better for me to read it. So if you are a reader, or even if you're not, I promise you, once you start reading it, you're going to get into it. Escape from Darkness by Rodney Dane. Escape from Darkness by Rodney Dane. Make sure that you friend him. He is on Facebook. He's also on IG. Um, he will answer you personally. He is a self-publisher. So make sure that you support Mr. Rodney Dane and read his book, Escape from Darkness. So this morning, we are going to be talking to Miss Yvonne, who has um, been there to support her daughter, Miss Chloe Olivia, um, on her journey to healing, um, but also uh, supporting her as an advocate, um, as a youth in the community who is trying to do great things. Um, and that this is just going to be really inspiring. I know that the, the twins, um, they go with me when I go out and do speaking engagements for against domestic violence and sexual assault. Um, they are also involved in our mentor program, BVP Care. Um, we have some amazing youths that we work with on a regular occasion, such as Miss Miyoshi. Miyoshia of Mio's World. Um, she is a beautiful young lady. We have interviewed her before here on the Speak Up and Inspire series. So we're going to be speaking today to Miss Yvonne um, about her daughter, Chloe Olivia, and maybe we will have a special appearance by Miss Chloe Olivia her, herself to let us know what it is as a parent to support your child when they are going through through anything that's really serious to um, or detrimental to them as youths, but also to their mental health and their, their social awareness, their community awareness. Um, and for Chloe Olivia, it was bullying. Um, that is something that um, I've experienced myself with heaven in school. And it was very, very critical for me to take the time to address the fact that she was being bullied in school and it was not being handled very well. I had to go to the teachers. I had to go to the principals. And at that point, when I wasn't satisfied with the way that they were handling it, I made contact with parent. Probably not the best thing to do, but I did because I felt that it wasn't being handled in the right way. And then I was prepared to go to the Board of Education because I thought it was very, very, very important that they take bullying seriously that was going on in the twin school. And once I started talking to people higher up, then things got done. And I can only imagine that that's also been um, what has happened with Miss Chloe Olivia. So we are waiting right now for Miss Yvonne to join us. And hopefully she will join us soon. But while we were waiting for Miss Yvonne to come online, if you or your child has experienced bullying in school, I would love for you to tell me what are the steps that you took to protect your child um, in school or even if it's in the community from bullying. What are some things that you did personally to excuse me, to support, to advocate, to um, help your child really get through, get through the, the fact that they were being bullied. It's serious. It's something that is going on in our schools, every single school, every single day. And kids are losing their life over it. We've had several kids um, that are in social media or on the news that have committed suicide because of the fact that they were being bullied in school and the school or the administrators <sighs> did nothing about it. They didn't take it seriously. Um, they just gave a slap on the hand. Um, nothing was done to the bully um, to stop their um, their ways and what they were doing to the to these children. And those children committed suicide. Um, we don't want to lose any of our kids to um, bullying. We don't want to lose any of our kids at all. But we definitely don't want to lose our kids if when nothing was done to help our children. Um, it's very important for as us 
as parents to be actively involved in our kids' lives, to know what is going on in their schools, um, to have a platform for your children to be able to just come and talk to you and tell you what is going on. I'm very, very thankful that I have a really good relationship with the twins, that they are comfortable coming and talking to me about pretty much anything. Um, and even though some things we don't want to hear, it's still important that we are approachable to our children, that our kids are able to come and talk to us. They're able to come and share what is going on in school, whether it's good or bad. And for us to listen and for us to um, take action if action is needed, because we do not want our children to feel lonely or abandoned or feel as if they are not being heard and do something to hurt themselves or to hurt others. There's been instances where there have been kids who have gone to school with guns and have killed people. And the reason that was given that they did this was because they were being bullied in school and they felt like they were not heard. They felt as if no one was doing anything, that there was no one on their side. And even though um, there are some mental health issues that result from bullying for our kids. And that, of course, is not an excuse to go out and hurt others, or it's not an excuse to go out and kill other innocent people. But it's the truth of our society nowadays. It is the truth of our schools nowadays. It is the truth with our kids nowadays that they are dealing with a lot in the schools that I didn't deal with, that maybe you didn't deal with as a child, but they are dealing with today. Um, I was a subject of bullying in school. Um, I know how it felt when I felt like I couldn't go and talk to someone. Um, and, but once I did, something was done about it. And I'm very um, thankful that I had someone who was my sister to go to and talk to about the girls in the school that were bullying me when I was in high school. But also I had really, really good friends in high school who cared about me and they reached out to my family. They um, joined me. They were always with me. They made sure that I was never alone um, until the situation was handled. And so I hope and I pray that all of you out there that are listening and will listen throughout this week, that you really talk to your children, that you sit them down, you talk to them about school, you talk to them about what's going on, whether it's good or bad, and make sure that there's an open line of communication to talk to your children about what is going on in the schools, what is going on in the neighborhood, what is just really going on with them as individuals. Because our children deserve to be able to come home, to be able to talk to us, their parents, their guardians, their protectors, about what is going on in school, what is going on with them, what is going on in the community, and what is it that they need help and they need support from us because without our support, our kids are gonna get lost. You don't want other people supporting your children who are not good for them. Children can fall victim to so many things, not just bullying, but also human and sex trafficking, to um, abuse in the schools, to sexual assault. Our children need to be able to come and talk to us to know that they can come and they can tell us the truth about what is going on in their lives, whether it's good or bad. And we need to be that vehicle, that source of comfort, of reassurance, of protection, and of support for our kids to learn to advocate for themselves and to advocate for others once they have healed from whatever it is that they are dealing with in our schools today. Um, lastly, before I bring on Miss Yvonne, um, my organization, Butterfly Visions Project, has started our second year of BBP Kids. And with BBP Kids, we are teaching children how to advocate for themselves and for others. Um, we're also teaching them um, social skills and supporting them 
with their emotional, mental, and social needs in school throughout the school year. So we have about 11 children right now that we are mentoring. Um, we have some amazing mentors that are teachers. They are community leaders. They um, have their own businesses. And our mentors are really excited about working with our kids this school year. Excuse me. Um, because we all love our children. We all love the youth in our community. Um, most of all of us are parents. And so we know um, personally how rough it can be for our kids. So if you have a child um, that is going to school, that is school age, that you feel would benefit from having a mentor, we are basically based right now in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, we have kids in Charlotte, North Carolina. We have um, a mentor in Columbia, so we are willing to take on um, a child in the Columbia area. Um, and we are also, um, have a mentor in Raleigh, North Carolina. So we are taking on children that are in the Raleigh, Durham area. So again, please, if you are interested in your child having a mentor in Columbia, between Columbia and Raleigh, so that covers a nice little span um, that would benefit from having a mentor, please reach out to me. Um, I can let you know about the mentor program because we are teaching our children how to advocate for themselves and how to advocate for others. And we are supporting them with their whole needs, their mental, social, emotional, and physical needs throughout the school year. I see that Miss Yvonne is on right now, so I am going to invite her to join us so that our interview with her in reference to her daughter and supporting her daughter, Miss Chloe Olivia, who is now an advocate in the community who is helping children um, advocate for themselves against bullying. Hello, Miss Yvonne, how are you? Hi, I'm doing great. You look beautiful. I know both of us were were like rubbing our eyes this morning. Are you ready, girl? Let's do this. <laughs> Just waking up and getting ready. So I'm ready. I am ready. Good, 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 good. Well, we're just going to go ahead and get right in there. So, um, Miss Yvonne, I know that um, you are a mom to Miss Chloe, but do you have other children? How many kids do you have? Tell us what their ages are. Two children. Um, Chloe Olivia is my oldest. She's 15. And I have a son, Jonathan. Uh, we call him John John. He's 11. Okay, so you have Chloe, that is 15, and then you have John John, that is 11, correct? Yes, he's okay. 11 years old. All right, awesome. So is Chloe in high school or in middle school? She's in it. She is, she's in 10th grade now. And Jonathan okay. is in um, 6th grade. Okay, okay, good, good. So you've got, you've got some kids that they've been in school for a while. So you know how it is to have to support your children in school and everything that they're going through, definitely, definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I tell you, uh, my first experience when Chloe first started kindergarten uh, was the hardest. That was a learning um, uh, period for me because I send her off to school. She's just happy, go lucky, just loving everybody and hugging everybody. And the yeah. first eight days of kindergarten, she uh, it started the first eight days. She was called fat continuously every single day uh, for the first eight days. And for the first eight days of school, I didn't know what to do or how to protect her. I didn't yeah. know if I should, if I should let it continue on. Um, mm -hmm. I, I really didn't know what to do. I was afraid I would be called um, um, uh, a parent who's uh, mouthy. If I said mm -hmm. something, I was afraid that they would start uh, teasing her even more if I said something. So I was afraid. I had to learn how to protect my child. Yeah, and yeah. Said, uh, this is your child. I've given her to you to protect while she's on this earth. That's when I decided to go stand up and speak out for her. But it was it was hard at first. It really was. 
Yeah, yeah. I understand that. Um, the twins, they started in pre-K um, and their their um, experiences didn't start till probably second or third grade. Um, but I felt the same way too at first, you know. Um, if I say something, are they going, are the teachers going to start treating her differently? Um, are the, the kids going to start teasing her, teasing the children even more because now she's a tattletale, quote unquote. Um, so yeah, yeah, I definitely understand how you feel. But once I spoke up and um, said what needed to be said, then some changes started happening. And so speaking up, the, it, the positives outweighed the negatives that, that occurred. So definitely, I definitely understand that. Yeah, and that's what we have to remember, that we have to speak up in order for action to occur. Because if not, it's going to continue. It's That's going true. to continue, 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 and and to a point where we don't want it to go. So um, we have to speak up as parents. Yes, definitely, definitely. Um, okay, so are you? You're in Charlotte. Are you in Charlotte, North Carolina? Yes, I am. Okay, um, and I know uh, CMS schools can be pretty pretty hard. Um, I just came out of CMS schools and. Um, it, it's, it's pretty rough. The kids there, you know, um, I had really wonderful experiences, but I, I saw a difference from me teaching back in um, the early 2000s to teaching now that kids are just, they're just different. They're, they're very, um, very headstrong. They're very independent. Um, we have children that are really learning how to advocate for themselves nowadays. But then we have the flip side where the children are, they're hurting each other. They're bringing um, guns to school. They're in gangs. Um, there's fights all the time. Um, and that's just not at CMS schools. That's in all the schools. Um, mm -hmm. Children are just different these days. Um, and so I worry about my kids almost every day because I am constantly um, on alert throughout the day wanting to know what is going on with them in school and making sure that they're safe in the school. How, how do you do when you send your kids to school now that you've experienced the children um, dealing with bullying and other issues? How do you feel when you send your kids to school now? Well, Tiffany, it's been five years that I started experiencing this bully and bullying situation with my daughter. And I have to admit, every day, still, when I send them out to school, there's still a part of me that feels like it's just leaving me. And like you, I worry all day until I get them in my car, get them in my presence. Um, it's a continuous worry. Every time I hear of a, a school lockdown, I have to check to make sure it's not their school. I don't want it to be any school, but as a mom, um, safety first for my children. And scary. Um, I, I feel afraid each time they walk out the door, each time I drop them off to school, my prayer is that they come back to me safe and sound. And I'm sure that's the prayer with every parent. Um, but we never know where it's going to hit. We never know who's bullying a child to the point of doing something that they really don't want to do. We never know um, what child is being bullied in school that's just saying, I've had it, I can't take it anymore. And that's all the, I mean, that's everywhere. So yeah, I stress a lot about my kids when they go out to school and when they come home, I'm happy when they come home, but now it's another next day, you gotta send them out again. Um, right. my, school, my children, they too were in CMS um, and that's where they got bullied. Um, they're now in charter schools. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, it's, it's much better. Um, but they're still bullying in charter schools. They're yes, still they are. bullying in charter schools. Matter of fact, um, last year was my first experience of having my son bullied. Uh, believe it or not, Tiffany. Miss Miss Yvonne, bullied. before you continue, if I can just stop you for one minute, I need you to speak up a little bit because I'm hardly hearing you. I'm sorry. Or maybe turn your volume up on your phone or your device because I can hardly hear you. Chloe. Okay. Okay. It's a little bit better, but it's still a little mm -hmm. faded, but go ahead. Okay. Hold on, Bib, and tell her I'm on a um, 
Okay. I'm sorry. Um, my first experience was having um, with my son being bullied was this year. Now, my son is a super He's respectable. Um, and he's an uh, honor roll student, um, AB honor roll student. Last year, um, the whole year, he got one C. Plus. <laughs> Excellent student. And believe it or not, he was bullied by teachers. Mm. By teachers. When I tell you, Tiff, I had to go up there so many times um, because um, of the bullying by teachers was just, it, it, it was crazy. It was hard wrenching to know that an adult would do this to a child. Would wow. do this to a child. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have, um, it, it's really hard when you have to deal with, with, um, with teachers because they, they, they're the ones that should know better. Um, and even though I haven't had that experience, I think for me, my reaction would probably be a little bit different because it's an adult. So how are you able to, I guess, maybe control your impulses to, you know, to really defend your child when it's an adult that's bullying your child? How was that? Because I, I can't, it, when, a, when a child is bullying my child, then I can't confront them. You know, I can't go up to them. I can't tell them not to do anything. To them. But when it's an adult, I don't think that I would be able to hold back from letting them know face to face to leave, you know, to not bother my child. That, that would be really hard for me. It, 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 you know what? I had already experienced some of that similar with Chloe because she was grabbed by a teacher and pushed up against the wall when she was in fourth grade. So I had oh, wow. Oh yeah, you haven't heard Chloe's story. Um, uh, so uh, I had already experienced that, um, but this was a whole different level because Jonathan has not bothered anybody, and neither did Chloe. But you know, now you're attack attacking my son, and now you're an adult. So I had no issue. I went up there every single day until things were taken care of. Every time he came home, he <coughs> said something. It's so important, parents, to email. Um, keep a record of everything yes. that everything that transpired. I would email them first, and then I was up there first thing in the morning. I would email, and I'm up there first thing. In the morning. So it's keeping yes. a record of what's taking place. Sometimes they would get back to me. Sometimes they would. It didn't matter. I was up there first thing in the morning. Because now you're an adult. You're on my right. level. Talk to me on my, my level. They even went as far as saying to me, "Well, Mrs. Gloston." Um, uh, we appreciate your concern, but next time, if you can make an appointment, I said the next, I said, listen, as long as you're mistreating my son, I will be up here. As long as I don't get a response, I will be up here to defend my son. So they even went as far as saying, well, maybe this is not the school for him. I said, oh, it's the school for him. All you have to do is treat him right. Right. All right. Treat him right. They went as far as even going, you know, asking him a question and doing this to him. So... I'm not saying that you, that I'm not giving you the advice to do this, but this is what I did. I right. went up, I asked questions. I said, has he ever been disrespectful? Has he ever been rude? Has he ever not done what you've asked him to do? And then all the answers was no. And I said to her, you're not going to do that to me. I said, well, I just want you to experience what my son felt when you did it to him. Because right. he's never given you a reason to, uh, to do this, shut him down. Or never gave you a reason um, to even talk harsh to him. She asked him the question, why would you tell your mother um, that it was loud in here when you were taking a test? Why not tell me? Why right. not? You cannot tell my children what not to tell me. And right. that's what I told you. So you're on my level now as an adult to an adult, professional, professional. When you're being unprofessional, I mean, I was very professional with it. But you're an adult now and you're talking to my child um, in a way that I'm not pleased. And I know that my child is respectful. I know that he is. So it was hard, but it wasn't hard because once I learned that we are our children's voice, then it was easy for me. You want, as a teacher, want to allow him to speak. So guess what? I have to speak for him. You shut him down. I now have to come up and speak for him. Right. So, right. Right. 
Um, I am, I'm still having to strain to hear you. I'm not sure what it is, um, but I'm still straining to hear you. So I'm hoping that everyone else can hear you because I can't hear everything you're saying. I can, but I can't, um, okay. but I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> um, so you, how did, how did the, that whole situation end with the teacher? Okay, well, um, after I went up there several times, it took a couple of times to go up there, sitting in her face, talking to her, letting her know that this is not what's going to happen. Um, and when I confronted her with the, uh, she, of course, she denied it. Um, and then, you know, it's sad because she was, she was one of us. Um, and um, I had the principal in. The principal had an attitude also because she was like, well, you're not going to come up here and do uh, treat my parents my teachers any kind of way. I said, well, you know, you need to know the truth. There's two sides to every story. Matter of fact, there's three, mine, hers, and Jonathan. So I brought Jonathan in. I let Jonathan tell what happened right in front of her. And I said, I said all I want you to do is apologize to him. Just apologize to him. You did something to him. He felt offended. He felt like you were all up in his space and in his, you know, uh, 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 mental, emotional state. And you did it in front of the class. All I want you to do is apologize to him. So right. finally, she apologized. She was in tears. Um, the principal apologized for taking her side to the story. He apologized. She apologized as well. And guess what I did? I gave her a big hug. Right. Right. I gave her right. a big hug. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that you had that result because, you know, sometimes even you know, sometimes we can be animated with our hands or, you know, we can get loud with our voices. Um, and some, sometimes it might, you know, we never know how the things that we do that are, that come natural to us um, are being perceived by others. Um, so I'm really glad that you were able to bring that to her attention, that um, eventually they saw exactly what was going on, because that could have been a really bad um, situation for, for Jonathan and also for the other kids in the classroom to see that if Jonathan can be treated like this and no one does anything about it, then they can treat me like this and nothing's going to be done about it. So I'm really glad that you were able to get through to that teacher that her actions and what she was doing was threatening to your son and that it wasn't healthy for him. So I'm really glad that you were diligent with that and that you um, took the time to go up there and do the right thing in a civil, <laughs> in a civil way. Um, Cause honestly, you know, when I've had issues with, with teachers, which is, has not been a lot, but when I've had issues with teachers, um, you know, I try to keep my cool so I can show them that there's a better way of doing things. But when you have someone who's consist constantly not being accountable for what they're doing to your child, I could see how that can be frustrating. Um, so I'm really and glad that you were able to get through. Right. I would say parents, as long as you don't go up and confront the teachers or don't go up and say something or be out children's voices, guess what? They're going to continue to be treated that way. Right. They're going to continue to be treated that way. We have to go up, be our kids' voices, because let, let me tell you what happened with him. They said they would never allow him to explain his side of what took place. Never. Right. And we have to be our children's voice. Okay, so you don't want to listen to him, then you're going to listen to me. And be careful because they always also have you sign sign these different papers um, admitting to your child doing certain <laughs> things. I refuse to sign it. Give me the paper. I'll put his story on there. This is what his side of the story is. And I'll sign that part. But all of that other stuff on there, because those records follow the, follow your children. So be right. careful what you sign. Be careful what you agree to. Be careful what you agree to. Because now you're saying that your child is a troublemaker or your child is a, um, a felony. Because believe it or not, they have the felony, uh, what is it, the, um, what is it called? Uh, I know they had it as, the one who, what is it called, Chloe? Offender, Offender and the, um, oh, I'm defender. so, and the yeah, offender and the defender. And okay. when I saw that, I was like, wait, 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 no, 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 no. This is like being in a prison system. I said, yeah, I am not yeah. doing anything. I said, this is offensive to me. So now you have the offender and the defender, and you have my <laughs> 
um, as uh, the offender? No, that is not going to happen. So be careful right. when you sign on these papers saying that your child did this and this and this because they have it set, offender and defender. Even the principal said, well, I know I don't like that either. But I I'm telling you, you have to be your children's voices. You have to be. I had uh, a dean of students say to me um, in regards to my son, Jonathan, um, well, we'll let him speak, but it doesn't mean that anything's going to change. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's what I did. Every time I went up there for a meeting, I said to him, I said to him, well, you can stay in the meeting, but I need somebody else in here who's objective. Right, right. Okay, so, so I'm gonna ask someone else. Yeah, I'm gonna ask you really quickly. Are you on your phone or your tablet? Because now I I'm I'm straining even more to hear you. Are you on a oh, phone on or phone. your tablet? On your phone. phone. Is your volume all the way up? All the way up. Let me check. It's all the way up. Yep. It's all the way up. Okay. So I wonder if it's wow. me. Um, anybody, if you are listening, and we have quite a few listeners, if you <coughs> cannot hear or if it's just, okay, so someone said that they can hear fine on their end, so maybe it's me. Okay, so um, we'll continue. So tell me about Chloe. Tell me um, what was going on with Chloe to the point where she is now. What, what, was, what was the catalyst or what, what drove her to where she's at now? Okay, like I said, I said earlier, she uh, was called fat the first eight days of school. Um, and of course, I went out and took care of that after, you know, a long, hard thinking. Um, and then from that point, I started going up to the school, just randomly going up lunch break or just before lunch break. I'm watching to see how she was. And she would always be over by herself alone, or she would be playing on a monkey bar or something. And a kid would come and just push her away and make her leave. And um, she was always alone. Um, so all of that started happening. And I just started watching her. So I started from kindergarten asking from day one, as soon as I pick her up, how was your day? And still to this day, the first thing they do when they get in the car is tell me how their day was. Just to stay out to the school for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, so she went from being um, called fat to shoe by fourth grade. She was kicked. She was slapped. She was spit on. She was grabbed by a teacher and pushed up against a wall. Um, another kid jumped on top of her um, and because they were having a, a temper tantrum. And she just happened to be the closest kid by. Jumped on her and started pounding on her. Um, uh, she was, like I said, she was spit on, pushed up against a wall by a teacher. She was told by a Caucasian kid, Chloe, back in the day, you a slave. She was told by another Caucasian kid, you should be a slave, tied to a tree and whipped. Um, so all of this happened to her. Um, a teacher said that she uh, called her annoying, told her that um, uh, she thought that uh, the guy was talking about an ogre. Uh, so a lot of this stuff was happening with Chloe Olivia. Um, and each time something would happen, I would email, I would go out, I would talk to them and was getting no, um, no results. I, I, I didn't feel like they were taking care of the issue. Um, I went out and talked to the principal. I talked to the teachers. Um, and finally, I ended up going to uh, the school board superintendent and going to um, uh, uh, the, the district, the zone superintendent. And not until um, we pulled it out of school in fourth grade. Uh, uh, like I said, the teacher was very, very annoying. Finally, I went up to the school. Um, now I hear a lot of static. Can you hear me? Oh, I can't hear you. No. Okay, can you hear me now? I can. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I can. So, um, we, uh, like I said, she was uh, told by a Caucasian kid back in the day, you would be my slave. You should be a slave tied to a tree and whipped. Um, yes, 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 yes. You, I thought you didn't hear that part because I didn't see no reaction, so I thought you didn't hear that part. Sorry, <laughs> I did not hear that part. Okay, that part. Let's stop for a minute. The, this child said what to her? There was a Caucasian kid who said to okay. her, you know, back in the day, you would have been my slave. 
And another Caucasian kid said to her, back in, uh, you should be a slave tied to a tree and whipped. And I'm, and when I finally went up, I went up to the school, talked to the uh, uh, dean. Okay. This was in middle school. This was middle school. So these kids have to be getting it from somewhere. Elementary. Right, right. Not middle school, elementary school. This was elementary school. Um, so I went up and I talked to her and I said, I need for you to get these students, find out why they treat Chloe the way they treat them. I need for you to pull them to the side and ask them, what has Chloe done? You know what their response was? I think she must have called about 10 kids. You know what their response was? She laughs too loud. Wow. She laughs too loud. She talks too loud. That's why we don't want to be bothered with her. That's why we call her names. Are you serious? So now she's being uh, uh, bullied because of the joy that she has, the, the laughter. Really? Really? And to the point of calling her a slave and saying those derogatory things is because of her laughter? And her laughter. That's exactly what they said. Because I had her get to the bottom of it. And that's what she told me. So was this an all-white school? Or was this a predominantly white school? Uh, uh, it was a mixture. It was, you know, okay. in, in, uh, over... All of it was elementary, but it was a mixture. It was a, it was a, okay. it was pretty more white, but yeah, there was some of us there still. Man, I, I can't, I can't imagine. Um, you know, growing up, I had the the, and I've spoken about this before. I've had the, the black prejudice of being a light skinned child. Um, being fair skin, you know, I have a tan right now. So, <laughs> you know, being light skin and um, having a certain texture of hair, um, you know, I dealt with that from my own people um, because of the, the mix in my family. Um, and it wasn't until I was maybe 16 or 17 when I went to um, a store in uh, Virginia way up up in the mountains and when i went in there the woman called um my boyfriend a monkey nigger i had never up until that point i had never dealt with prejudice against white people it was always among my own people so that this is like a whole new level of bullying when you start attacking someone and using race in in the bullying that's that that's to a whole nother level um more than just bullying that that's so much more wow i, I can't imagine it was rough it was rough it was really rough so I, I distinctly remember that happened the day that happened the next day i was out at the school volunteering and as i was volunteering the teacher came to came up through the office and she was coming to call me. And she says, oh, you're here. And I was like, uh, yeah. She says, well, I was just about to call you. And I said, what's going on? Well, Chloe's being really rude and disrespectful. And I wanted to call you. I was like, Chloe? Because Chloe's not rude and disrespectful. And I'm right. like, you took me by surprise. I said, well, well, what's going on? She said, well, Chloe was talking. And um, I said to her that she was talking. And I... I asked her to stop and she said that she wasn't talking. And I said, okay, but I need you to stop. So it was going back and forth. So Chloe, what Chloe did was she said to the student next to her, would you let her know that I wasn't talking? So she's trying to prove that she wasn't talking. I said, okay, well, how is that being rude? She said, well, it's mm -hmm. being rude because now she's trying to get another student in to prove her point. I said, well, her, po her point is valid. If she says she wasn't talking, then she wasn't talking. I said, plus, I said, I find it interesting that you're coming to me telling me that my daughter was being rude, yet something that took place yesterday you never called me about, which was right. uh, you should be a slave tied to a tree and whip. So I took her by surprise, and I said, I need a meeting with you and the principal ASAP, like, right now. Because right. you can come to me about this, but you never came to me about someone doing a racial remark to my child. So we dealt right. with that right then and there. And of course, there's so many other things that was coming out. She, One kid said something about, are we on the color brown today? Because they did the color thingy day by day. 
she says to him, well, you look pretty brown to me. So it's like a lot of that. Yes. Well, anyway. Wow. So oh, my God. It's a lot behind her story. Um, so that's pretty much her story. We pulled her out of school in fourth grade and decided to homeschool her because it was just getting too much. And one of the things I've always asked her, Chloe, have you ever, um, you're not thinking about hurting yourself or hurting anyone. I said, I right. need to make sure you're okay. We will pray with her every day. We taught her the, you know, the meaning of prayer. Um, make sure you're not thinking these thoughts. We love you. We always showed her that we love her and supported mm -hmm. her. And, you know, was just out there for anything. Um, so we pulled her out in homeschool in fourth grade. She was playing the piano since she was three. She started playing with her toes. So in oh. fourth grade, she really started getting into um, playing. And she started oh. writing songs about how she felt. That was her outlet um, okay. to get her how she felt out. She started writing songs about how she felt and um, her bullying issues. And we started going to back to school events, different churches, her sharing her story. I was mm -hmm. talking at that time. I don't even talk now. I'm just like behind the scenes. She just, <laughs> she just took my little, you know, shine. So yeah. we started going to the school events and sharing her story. You wouldn't, I mean, you would believe there are so many kids out there that are being bullied that they're not even telling um, mm. their parents or telling anyone. And when we started doing this, we saw how many kids were just hurting and yeah. how many kids were not telling their parents. They will come over and talk to her and they would just break down. And now I'm having to call the parents over um, to console their children, let them know what's what's going on. Right. So um, fifth grade, she says to me, mommy, I want to go back to school. I'm like, what? <laughs> you want to go where? She says, yes, and I want to go back to the same school. The same school with the kids that bullied you, Chloe. Are you sure? That was the hardest decision that my husband and I ever had to make was to allow her to go back to the same school with the same teachers, with the same kids that mm -hmm. was bullying her. She says, mom, I don't want them to take away my education. It's not fair that they get to go into school and be in school and I get to have to be homeschooled because of what they're doing. So right. we did let her go back to school. Her voice became heard around the school, um, defending the bullies, defending herself. Um, and they finally asked her to write the fifth grade graduation song. So now everybody oh. that bullied her wanted to be her friend because now they wanted her to write <laughs> In a verse in her song. So right. she's like, Mommy, what do I do? I'm like, uh, no. Right. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> you will write the song for you. I said, right. what you can do is give them some oohs and some ahs that you can teach to them from a distance. So she had to teach them her song with the oohs and the ahs. They sat out in the audience while she was up on the baby grand piano with all the dignitaries at her fifth grade graduation. Standard oh, wow. It was amazing. Wow. I mean, so many other things that we've done since then. Wow. That is amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. I, um, I, once I started, um, I can't remember where I saw Chloe Olivia. It was on some, somewhere in my network. I saw her, um, and I was just amazed at her being able to stand up for herself. She's such a beautiful girl. I can't imagine her being in class and me saying anything negative about her. I've never even met her yet, but just looking at her, seeing her picture, she, she's just a, a shining light and she's such a beautiful woman. And um, I, I'm so proud of her. I'm proud of you for standing up for her. Um, because one thing that I find is that sometimes parents don't believe their children. Right. They don't believe their children. And that's a problem in itself because now not only are you dealing with bullying in school, but now you're coming home and you're telling your parents and your parents don't even believe you. Um, and so that on top of the bullying becomes even more of an issue for the child when you're coming home to the people that are supposed to protect you and they don't even believe you. So I am so happy that you listened to your child and that you did something um, about it. Um, you know, I've, I've dealt with that with, with my kids and um, I've been asked, well, 
are you sure they're not just exaggerating? Or are you sure that that's how it really went? And I'm like, well, if there is an exaggeration or if that's not how it really went, I'm going to find out. I'm not just going to sit here and do nothing about it. Um, because then what does that say to my child? Right, right. What does that say to your child about you? And, right. And this is my thing. Parents, you need to know your children so well so you yeah. know they're telling the truth of when they're exactly. You should know your children mm -hmm. so well. You know when they're telling the truth. I know right. my children. When they're lying, trust me, I know they're lying. Right. I know they're lying. And one thing I taught my kids, don't you ever let me go out there and defend you and find out that you're lying to me. Don't right. do it. I will defend you to the hill. But don't let me go out to defend you and I find out you're lying. Because right. then they make me look bad, they make all parents look bad, and it sets up a pattern for the other parents that's defending their children. Okay. Right. So that that's just that that that's a no-brainer. But know your children so mm -hmm. well to you know if they're telling the truth or not. Please, parents, my daughter always said to me, listen, we need the adults to listen to us. That's what she yeah. said. Mom, you need the adults to listen to us. Sometimes we as kids are not being heard. We mm -hmm. need them to listen. Sometimes we see them, we hear them. Listening. We need to be listeners to our children instead of like, yeah, 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 okay. Sit down and talk with your children. Right. My kids and tell me everything. Even if it's a boy that she's interested in when she knows she can't date. <laughs> And that's the good thing about my, I, I'm saying my kids. And if you can get your kids that, that way, even if it's something that they know goes against the rule and they're thinking about it, they'll tell you. That's right. where my kids are. You know, yeah. so we want to be listeners to our children. Yes, I, I agree with that. Um, you know, my kids, they're 11 and they've had their little crushes or whatever, but I prefer that they come to me and talk about those crushes, knowing that they can't date, than for them to go talk to the, uh, their peers or to, or an, an adult who doesn't have the same morals and the same values as me when it comes to raising my kids. But that's also true that we have to know our kids. I know when my daughter is not telling the truth. I know when she's telling the truth. I know the same thing with my son. I know when he's telling the truth and I know when he's not telling the truth. Um, and we talk about it. You know, if if you're telling the truth, I've got you 100%. But there's always something behind the untruth that is true, um, if that makes any sense. So if they're coming to me and they're saying, you know, this is what's going on, so forth and so on, and there's some untruth to it, there's always some truth to it that, that, that needs to come out. And maybe that they're, covering up or they're saying what they're saying because they don't want to get in trouble but there's always some truth in there somewhere and i've learned that um talking to kids a lot of times they're scared they're scared to tell to tell what's going on you know they're scared to maybe think that they're going to get in trouble so sometimes what they tell you might not be the complete you know truth and that's just for me but i've i've learned to to know that there is some truth and, and everything. Um, and so we talk about that. Okay, that doesn't sound right. Tell me again and tell me exactly the way it happened. So that, that that way they know that I'm listening and they know that I want to believe in what they're telling me. And once I, I get the whole story, I'm all there. I'm all there for you. I'm going to defend you to the end and I'm going to make sure that this does not keep going on. It's not going to keep going on. So knowing your children is very important. And don't let anybody tell you differently. You know your child. And that, that, that's, our, that's our job. That's our job as parents. That's our job as, as moms to, to protect our children. That's what we're you here know, for. We know our children and we have to know our children. Like you said, there's truth behind the truth. And when we get to the truth behind the truth, then we mm -hmm. still have to do it. Um, right. Uh, there's always one little part, uh, like, like, uh, my daughter, she contemplated suicide. I never knew it until about two, three years later, she finally fessed up. Uh, but I've always talked to her about that. I've always right. said that's an option. Um, she wrote on her desk, uh, uh, I'm useless. I, I want to kill myself. 
I don't need to be here. Uh, um, she said she was coming. She would come into the kitchen at different times and see knives and think about ending it all and different things like that. That was terrifying to me to think mm -hmm. that she was living under my roof and I did not, you know, know that. Right. And there's a lot of kids that hide that part. There's a lot of kids that hide that part. So we need to get to know our children so well till even if they're thinking about something like that, they can come to you and talk to you. Now we talk openly about it. Right. But suppose I, I, I'm one of the blessed ones. Suppose I did not have this opportunity to talk to you about my child or to talk to my child. Suppose she had already committed suicide. We get right. phone calls even now about kids who have committed suicide or attempted suicide. You see what I'm saying? So we yeah. need to somehow we need to, to tune into our children till we they're so they can tell us these things and tell the truth. Um, the teacher never even told me. The teacher told her, "Oh, just erase that off your desk." Never told oh. me that that's what was going on. Y you see what I'm saying? So we yeah. can't always depend on the teachers to tell us little signs and things that are taking place. We have to know our children so well till we, you know, sense something about her. Her grades went from <clears throat> straight A's to D's in one semester. Really? That is right. not her. That's a true sign that something is going on. Straight right. A's to D's? D's. And the right. teacher never even called me to say uh, right. what was going on or anything? No, no. something is not right. And what right. I found that what was happening is the teacher's telling her, you're not as smart as you think you are. You, you know, uh, waving someone else's paper in her face. See, this is what you should have done. You're not as smart as you think you are. You would not believe the stuff that I have had to endure. But we need to know our kids so well so we can protect them from, to protect them from these suicidal thoughts. Right. Um, they're going to tell us the truth no matter what, whether you're the one that's in the wrong or whether someone else is in the wrong. So if you're in the wrong, what made you do what you did? You right. see what I'm saying? Something behind that, like you said, made them do, made them react, made them respond. And we need to know the truth behind the truth, just as you stated. Right. Yeah. Um, someone commented that bullying in school has went to another level with social media. Um, and that is so true. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I had a young lady. Um, I was going to um, a youth organization to uh, to talk to them about um, sexual assault. And she was crying because some boy that um, I guess they broke up or something was posting on social media all of her business and a lot of the stuff was lies and me knowing her knew it was lies but then he started posting pictures of her like putting her face on pictures of like other things that were very derogatory um, and posting them. So you, you're right, Sean, that they're, the bullying in school is to a whole nother level from when I was a kid and I'm sure from when you were a kid. And we, at that time, we didn't even know that it was called bullying. We just thought that it was kids that didn't like us that were talking bad about us. But now we know that bullying has a lot of negative effects it's 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 ruin it's hurting our kids um their emotional and their mental state um it's causing children to commit suicide or attempt to commit suicide or even think about suicide because they feel all of this negativity in school from bullying and so i'm i'm so happy that your girl um, that Chloe was able to finally admit that because I'm sure that even though she maybe was no longer suicidal, I'm sure that it had to been really weighing on her mind that she even mm -hmm. thought to even do something like that. So I'm so, so, so happy that she came to talk to you. Um, I'm a suicide survivor. Um, so I know how that feels to want to be gone because you're emotionally in turmoil. I know how that feels. Um, so I'm so happy that she had you and your husband um, to be able to come and talk to because a lot of children don't have that. They don't have parents that they can go to and talk to. And even if they do, they're scared. They're scared. Yeah. 
So tell us about Chloe Olivia. What is she doing now? Um, how, what is she doing now? How can we we see? How can we follow her? Um, does she have a website? Does she have an in Instagram? Tell us how how can we see and know what is going on with Miss Chloe? Oh my God. Okay, I will post all the websites uh, up later, but her website is uh, uh, www dot the t h e chloe c h l o e olivia o l i v i a and her instagram is at the chloe olivia um her facebook is chloe olivia gloston g l o s t o n um and then of course she says facebook is for old people so here i am yvonne y d o n n e gloston g l o s t o n i'm the old one but it's okay and, um, <laughs> So you can follow us that way. I do a lot of her posting. Um, she's just so busy with school and other things that she's doing. Um, I usually keep her posting up to date. So follow us, follow us. So there are some amazing things that Chloe Olivia is doing. We just had our second annual Beyond the Bullying Weekend Getaway, which was July the 19th. Uh, we take, we, uh, take our, um, our nominations for kids that have been bullied, low self-esteem, suicidal, depressed, and we take them away for a weekend getaway with absolutely no bullying. Um, we feed them with lots of candies, pizza, soda. Um, I mean, just load them up. We have a lot of fun this year. Um, Olive Garden sponsored our sit down dinner. Um, and we had Princess Me Party Bus, which is amazing. Y'all have to check her out. Princess Me Party Bus, who uh, donated a pampering session for all of our girls. Um, go to our website, you'll see it. Um, Perfect session for all our girls, manicure and pedicure. It was amazing. And then we had Quaddy D who came to the hotel and while the boys were playing video game, cut the boys' hair. Then we had Jada White came and helped do the girls' makeup, all getting them prepared for a full sit-down dinner at Olive Garden where we had um, Princess uh, Miss North Carolina, uh, Christy, Krista Hoffman, and we had... Um, London Tucker, who was Miss Teen North Carolina, and Nicole Collin, which was Miss International North Carolina. They came dressed up in their full gowns, their sashes, oh. and Chloe had on her gown and her sash. So we got them all dialed up and we went out to a sit down dinner, which was amazing. Amazing. Nice. And they poured yes. into Miss North Carolina, Miss Teen North Carolina, Miss International North Carolina. They poured into our kids right as we were sitting down for dinner. And right. um, so we did that. Well, CC's Pizza sponsor. Um, and then the amazing thing, we had someone that was there doing a podcast at the hotel. And um, they saw the kids because we had to make T-shirts. Um, mm -hmm. They saw the kids on the T-shirts and wanted to know what was going on. Chloe got to share her story. Guess what they did? They paid for all five of our hotel rooms. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> They paid for all five of our hotel rooms for that weekend. And they're going to be our sponsor for next year. Oh, wow. So we that is amazing. We don't that have to do anything. We're not begging anybody for money. Although we still take it because there's a lot of stuff that we're still doing. Um, they're right. going to sponsor us next year. So we want to take it up to 50 kids. So follow, follow, follow. You know anybody. Um, submit their uh, uh, their information. You'll see um, when we're um, taking nominations so that we can up it to 50 kids. And if you want to bring it to your area, if you want to bring Chloe Olivia's <laughs> Beyond the Bullying Weekend to your area, let me know. We will definitely we travel. We travel. We bring it to your area. Um, so later on that night, we had the most amazing session. We gathered in my room we had all kind of goodies. We laughed, we talked, and we started sharing our stories. When I tell you, we have some hurt kids. The kids, it, it just, I mean, it ended in sobbing tears. All mm -hmm. the kids hugging, consoling one another. Even the boys were crying, believe it or not. Um, so it was just amazing. We do have a mental health coach that we have um, on yeah. our team, Mel Mackey. Uh, she's a mental health coach, um, suicide prevention coach. We have a guidance counselor on our team, uh, Lana Johnson. We have Felicia Flowers. We have Regina um, Cohen. And then, of course, we have my husband. And we have a team that's ready 
to uh, take on our kids and do some amazing things with them. So that's one. We have Chloe Olivia's Chat and Chew, which is a TV show on XOD on the man, powered by PG um, in TV, uh, uh, Pastor Teresa Jordan. Uh, it's a, it's like, it's on demand. So it's XOD on demand. Chloe Olivia's Chat and Chew. She just won for best production. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> we have over 300 million. And it's all over the world. Um, so we have that going on. Uh, watch our website because we always do so, our, our Facebook and Instagram. We're always doing something every month. We try to put something out like this month, coming this month here, September the 28th. We're looking to go apple picking, taking the okay. kids apple picking. Uh, we've taken them horseback riding. Um, we've we, we've done a lot of different things with them um, with Chloe Olivia's Chat and Chew. And if you're a restaurant and you want to host an event, we take those two. A number okay. of restaurants have been hosting um, Chloe Olivia's Chat and Chew. She's a multi award winner. A singer, songwriter, motivational speaker. She's won multiple awards. She's been to Las Vegas about three times to the Stella. She has an event coming up in New York City. Jeff Davis Center this weekend coming with me, CT. Um, uh, kids, uh, kids, talented kids. Uh, that's this weekend. She has a real busy schedule. She um, October, she's been nominated and will be receiving an honorary uh, degree in uh, National Community Services for mm -hmm. to receive this award. Um, it's a lie. I, I promise you. It's, it, I got That's a, my thing. Crazy. So that is talking, amazing. Yes. And she's written over 100 songs. She's written over 100 songs. Nice, nice. Um, that this is so beautiful. Um, I know I remember about your your July trip, and I was um, I found out about it at the very tail end because I wanted to get my daughter involved. So I would definitely be watching out to see if I can get her in there next year. Um, I think it would be a good experience for her. Um, she's been in counseling since she's had um, the different experiences she's had, and she's doing really, really good. I think that this will be just something added that would be beneficial to her, and also with her wanting to start advocating her, herself and join mama in the ranks on, <laughs> in the community. Um, I am so proud of Miss Chloe. I am um, so grateful to you for believing in your child, um, not just Chloe, but also uh, Jonathan as well, um, advocating for them. And now your daughter is advocating for other children. She's doing great things in the community. Um, and I am so proud of her. I am exceptionally proud of you as a mom because sometimes I, I, I hate to say it, but being a teacher in the school system, I saw so many parents who were not active in their children's lives, who did not know what was going on with their children, um, who were so busy working and paying bills that they, they we're really not seeing what was going on with their children. So I'm really happy that you and your husband took that time out to really pay attention to your child and get to know your children and to know that you have to be the first person that they can talk to and the first person that's going to advocate for them to make sure that they are healthy and strong and just socially and mentally healthy. Um, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on for our Inspirational Teachers Month because you are an inspirational teacher. You've taught your child mm -hmm. to fight and for her to advocate for herself. And that is so important for us parents to do. Um, so one more time, tell us how we can find Chloe Olivia. And um, if you could please, before we, after we're done, if you can tag people that you've mentioned, tagged organizations so that it's on the thread and people can see where to go to find out about these great people that have okay. been in Chloe's life. Well, here she is. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi beautiful. <laughs> how are you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you called her beautiful, you know. Uh, she was called ugly so many times in school yeah. until she wrote a song entitled I'm the Crazy Kind of Beautiful, which was licensed out by PBS Kids. Oh, that is so yeah. nice. That's so nice. Hello, beautiful. How are you? How are you? I'm good. 
I know it's early, but I was hoping that you would make an, an appearance. So I'm so happy that you did. Um, I am really, really hoping that you um, and I can schedule something for you to talk to our BVP kids um, about bullying and um, advocating because that's one of the things that we're teaching them. So I would really, really love to get on your schedule sometime before the school year mm -hmm. ends. For you to talk to them personally about, um, you know, what you do about your experiences. I think that would be exceptional for them. I think it would be a good um, learning opportunity for them, but also just give them a chance to see somebody who is overcome bullying and is doing something to change um, our communities and our schools. And I'm so grateful for you doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. You were so gorgeous. <laughs> You're such a great like mom. <laughs> She's like a mama, yes. <laughs> she get it from her mama, I see. <laughs> yes, so um, tell us again how we can find you. Um, and do you have like, um, I guess a platform for kids? So I can say to my daughter, hey, this is where you can follow um, Chloe at. Um, do you have that specifically for kids to be able to look at and see what you're doing and so forth. Um, absolutely. My business page um, is mainly like, I don't post anything that's like, you know, out of, you know, context and stuff that's like not supposed to be on there. Um, okay. I don't post that. At all. So um, I think a lot of kids can go on my Instagram, which is at the okay. Chloe Olivia. Um, and look through what I'm doing. You can talk to me. I like run my own, you know, social media and I hope that it stays that way because I always will. Um, okay. Instagram, not Facebook. <laughs> Facebook is for old people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, that, um, but yeah, you can text me and stuff and I'll text you back. Yeah, she does. She runs all mm -hmm. of it. If, she, if your daughter reaches out to Chloe or anybody that wants to reach out to Chloe, mm -hmm. reach out to her. Like I said, we have um, uh, uh, the support that we need to help you. So reach okay. out to her. She responds. Trust me, she responds. Not me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's a good thing that's a good thing well I am proud of both of you um I'm glad that I finally got a chance to meet both of you um I'm gonna send something to you in a private message Miss Yvonne and Chloe Chloe um to let you know something that we have coming up to see if you're available um to come out and meet our kids um but I'm so proud of you I'm so proud of everything that you're doing what you've overcome um you have a awesome mom chloe so always love her always um give her hugs and kisses because you're never too old to give hugs and kisses and just let her know that you you appreciate her um because as parents sometimes we're not sure if we're doing the right thing and so it's really good when our kids let us know that you are doing the right thing so you both are great please tell jonathan and your husband that i said hello and good morning and i hope that you guys have a great day um i'm gonna um, send the link for the replay to you guys and um, mm -hmm. just make sure that you tag as many people that you mentioned today so that they can see that you shouted them out and we will be in contact soon. I'm excited. I'm excited to get to meet you face to face and give you both hugs <laughs> for everything you're doing. We love it. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So thank you so much and thank you everyone who has listened in. We had a really, really great audience. I was watching to see who was looking. Um, so hello. Uh, Sherry. Hi, Jairus Angels. Jairus Angels um, houses girls who are in foster care. So she would be a great um, organization to reach out to, Jairus Angels. So maybe you can connect with her, her girls that are in her home. And hello, Miss Andrea. Miss Andrea is a domestic violence um, advocate and speaker. Um, we had a lot of great people watching you. So I'm sure that you're going to I yeah. had some people uh, tune in as well, Dawn and Beverly and Katrina. Yes. Yeah. I saw them. Thank you so much for tuning in. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I know. I was going like this. Are we still doing this? Are we still doing this? <laughs> All right, ladies. Well, have a great day. I will definitely be in contact and make sure that you tag people on the, on this thread. Um, and we will we will talk soon. I'm sure we're going to meet very very soon. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>